In this remote corner of Denmark, there once lived two sisters who were both well past the days of their youth. They had been christened Martina and Philippa. After the great religious reformer Martin Luther and his friend Philip Melanchthon, they spent all their time and almost all of their small income on good works. Their father had been a priest and a prophet who had founded his own religious sect. He was well respected by his congregation and perhaps a little feared. The good man had married late in life and was by now long dead. Good day. Every year his disciples became fewer in number, but they continued gathering to read and to interpret the word and to honor the spirit of their master, whose presence they felt among them. sisters had a French servant. Her name was Babette. This may seem strange for two Puritan ladies living in such a remote, desolate place, and it deserves an explanation. Babette's presence in the house of those ladies can be explained only through the hidden regions of the heart. As young girls, the beauty of Martina and Philippa was likened to that of flowering fruit trees. They were never to be seen at balls or parties. The young men went to church in the hope of seeing them. flock, earthly love and marriage were considered to be of scant worth and merely empty illusion. In this calling, my only riches are my daughters. They are my silver and gold. They are my only treasure. Not surprisingly, these two beauties had upset the peace of heart and the destinies of two young gentlemen from the great world outside.
One of them was a young officer whose name was Lorenz Lohenhelm. He had led a merry life in his garrison town and had fallen into debt. Attention! Captain, sir, 20 men present and accounted for. Grip on yourself. <laughs> You'll stay with your aunt for the next three months. The summer? Yes. Summer and Vosborg? Yes. And Jutland? Yes. The recent irresponsible events, I can say, have dictated my decision. Three months to ponder, and I hope it will be enough. I welcome you to Vosburg. Come, I will show you to your room. Mesmerized by the beauty of young Martina, he had a stirring vision of a higher and purer life without creditors' letters or parental lectures and with a gentle angel at his side. With the help of his pious aunt, he gained admission to the pastor's house. Don't just stand there like a ninny. Go and get a cloth.
Mercy and truth in the Lord's eyes merge. Dear brothers and sisters, righteousness and peace shall kiss one another. He repeated his visits, but it seemed to him that each time he grew more insignificant. <coughs> Wrong pipe. God's paths run beyond the mountains and the oceans in all their power. For man's eye sees not a single track. Amen. Amen. and as a gentleman beyond the mountain and the sea Where the other young officers spoke of their loves, he was silent about his. For reliving it now, and seeing it as if through the eyes of others, he saw himself as pitiable and forlorn. Lorenz. What is it, Lorenz? You look so frustrated. Makes me think there's a woman somewhere. If I camouflage my heart, does my soul shine through? Can you feel the saber that fillets the heart? <laughs> you are such a dreamer, Lorenz. I want never to dream again, never again. I am determined to forge ahead in my profession. From now on, I mean to look backward no more. I shall marry and be successful whether it be on the ocean or on the snowy peak. He married a lady-in-waiting to Queen Sophia. fashionable at the court, and he was adept at applying phrases from the parsonage that were engraved in his memory. We all must ask the Lord's mercy. We must carry out the Lord's tasks with love. appeared and then vanished as suddenly. singer from Paris who had been performing at the Royal Opera in Stockholm. The 
It was marvelous. Thank you very, very much. Such a nice evening. You are most kind, madame. Très gentil. Merci. Merci, madame. Stockholm is indeed a charming city. Yes. All of Scandinavia is lovely, Monsieur Papa. I travel much, but what I really yearn for is to be solitary. I love silence. The coast and silence and the pounding of waves. Monsieur, you'll find silence and seacoast and pounding waves on the west coast of Denmark and Jutland, you'll find them. Everybody swears that Jutland has good air. Good for the heart and the soul, they say. And the sea tells stories. You'll want company before you leave. Achille went to Jutland and there fell into a kind of melancholy. He suddenly saw himself as an old man, an old man at the end of his career. Good day, Monsieur Pasteur. Good day to you, sir. I'm here in your country on a visit. Here's my card. I'm staying at the grocer's. I should like to tutor the young lady I heard singing. I think she could be another Walensky. Her voice mesmerized me, touched me as I've never been touched before. Filled the church. With training, she will sing like an angel. That is important when one sings the praises of our Lord. Are you a papist, sir? We oui. Catholic, uh, Papist. Enter, Monsieur... Monsieur Achille... Papin. I have spoken to my daughter, Monsieur Pepin, and I have given Philippa her father's consent. It is merely you, Monsieur. Au revoir, Monsieur Le Pasteur. Au revoir, Monsieur Pepin. 
Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir, monsieur. Till tomorrow. Oui. Monsieur. Oh, merci. So wonderful, Philippa. You will be... You will be like a star in the heavens. You will be the only star. No one can sing as well as Philippa. Your perfect aria is heard by kings, emperors, as you sing from your heart. If you listen and do as I tell you, precisely as I tell you, you will save souls and you will surely comfort the poor. Well, Philippa, are you making progress with Monsieur Pepin? Yes, Father.
L'amour nous unira. L'amour nous unira. I would discontinue the lessons, Papa. Please inform Monsieur Papa of my decision. They are wide, his paths. No river is like a rivulet. Would you see that your guest receives this message? Yeah. by soprano. Achille Papa took the next ship out of Frederikshavn and returned to Paris. was many years later, on a September night in 1871.
mesdames. Vous souvenez-vous de moi? Do you remember me? When I think of you, I recall the perfume of wild lilies of the valley. Could the memory of a Frenchman who is forever devoted to you move your hearts to save the life of a Frenchwoman? La fille d'une femme française. The unfortunate bearer of this letter is Madame Babette Hersin, who, like my beautiful Empress, has been forced to flee Paris. Civil war has been raging in our streets. Madame Hersin's husband and son were killed like rats. She herself narrowly escaped the blood-stained hands of General Gallifet. She has lost everything and dares not remain in France. A nephew of hers works aboard a ship bound for Frederickshaven. He has arranged a passage for her. She asked whether I knew any generous people in Denmark. This evoked my memories of you that I have long cherished. For 35 years, Mademoiselle Philippe. I have deplored the fate that kept your voice from filling the Grand Opera House in Paris. Lorsque je pense à vous, honoré, respecté, entouré d'une. Yet when I think of you honored, respected, surrounded by a swarm of loving grandchildren, and when I think of myself, an old man, lonely and alone, forgotten by those who once applauded and adored me, I feel that it is you who chose the better path in life. What is fame? The grave awaits us all. And yet, my beautiful soprano of the snows, as I write this, I feel that the grave is not the end. In paradise, I shall hear your voice again. There you will forever be the great artist that God intended you to be. Oh, how you will enchant the angels. Babette can cook. Ladies, please accept the humble thanks of a friend who was once Achille Papin. Madame, nous craignons de ne pouvoir honorer vos services. Nous n'avons pas de revenus assez importants pour nous permettre d'avoir notre service en ce vent doué d'expérience. Mais je ne veux travailler que. Pour les amis de M. Papa, je travaillerai pour rien. Si vous ne me prenez pas à votre service, je n'ai plus qu'à mourir. Oh non, 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 non. Restez avec nous. Oui, restez avec nous. in the bowl. Hmm? We must soak this about an hour, all right? An hour in the bowl. An hour in the bowl. Come. Come. Cut in slices.
bread. 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 First some water. A little ale. The word is ale. Ale. And then we put it through a sip. Tammy, yes, the word for Tammy. Ale bread. Ale bread. That's right. It must be cooked for one hour. That is what we call cooking. Cooking. Bonjour, Monsieur Larsen. Good day, Madame Babette. Oignon. Two onion. Two onion. Mm -hmm. Sucre. Sugar. Sugar. Two skillings. Two skillings. Mm -hmm. Two. Two skillings. Two. Merci. Au revoir, Monsieur Larsen. Thank you, Madame. Goodbye. There you are. Thank you. Thank you, Babette. It's miraculous, Philippa. Since Babette, we have more money than ever before. Babette had now worked for the pastor's daughters for 14 years. Fish not fresh. An hour ago, they were swimming in the sea. How much? Three skillings. Two skillings. Three. Three then. Four skillings. Three. Come, give us your basket. You win. Good day. Those two for their skillings. You seem such nice ladies, yet it's like you want to send me to the poorhouse. Good day. Bonjour, Madame Babette. I'd like a small uh, little bacon. Mm -hmm. The last was rancid. Are you sure? Mm. Mm hmm. La 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 la. C 
le pays qui m'a donné, donné le jour. <laughs> you miss your country. My only link with France is the lottery ticket. Hmm? One of my dear friends in Paris renews it each year. I hope you win. <laughs> Thanks. Goodbye. Au revoir, Madame Babette. Oh, that one is very clever. <laughs> yeah. Those sins of your youth will be forgiven, Christopher. Jesus Christ died on the cross and cleansed our souls with his blood. Hallelujah. Ye who seek yes. Christ, your eyes turn to the vault of heaven. It is in the bosom of the skies that you will see the signs of his infinite kingdom. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Also, thanks for sending us Babette. It is her labor that frees the sisters to tend the neediest in thy flock. Amen. As the years went by, the pastor's disciples became more testy and querulous. Sometimes old wounds were reopened and there was discord in the congregation. Dear Solvig, I recall exactly how badly I was always treated by my sister. You say you suffered abuse from me, but aren't you the fraudulent Two-Face? You were jealous, filled with jealousy. Let's have a nice simple one. O oh Lord, thine is the kingdom. Oh, heaven and I'm no fool, Lars. Did you really believe I didn't know that you were cheating in our business? How many times have I told you your recollection is ridiculous? I'd honestly be willing to bet you have no idea what you ate for lunch. Herring with ale, And I insist that you were a thief. Sa, 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 sa. A Christian form. My dear dead husband will ever forgive me for deceiving him. Yes, we were so young. That's no excuse. I was married. I wouldn't have done it without your inducements. Yes, but you did consent. You pressured me. Will God ever forgive us? And can my husband forgive us too? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus died at Calvary. Calvary, Martina? Dear sisters and brothers, the 15th of November is the 100th anniversary of the birth of our Father. And we'd like to celebrate it, well, as if I, I hardly know how to say it, well, as if he were right here in the parsonage with us. Yet, if the truth of our hearts is to be told, my sister and I are much grieved over the intolerance and disagreements among us. In the memory of our pastor, we must all strive to recreate a fountainhead of peace and brotherhood here. To get to heaven, I'd say that you have got a fat chance. Hallelujah. That will suffice for today. <laughs>
Come in. It's for Madame Babette Hesson. Yes? From France. She'll get it. It's for Babette. It's addressed to you, Babette. Thanks. Can it be? I've won the lottery. Ten thousand francs. Huh? You've won the lottery. Congratulations, Babette. Thank you. Well, the Lord gave, and now he taketh away. Thank you for helping. You're welcome. Come in. I have a request, mademoiselle. Yes, a request, Babette? Sit, Babette. I would like to contribute the celebration dinner for the pastor's birthday. Oh, but we really hadn't any intention of serving a meal. We thought just a modest supper, just a simple snack with perhaps a cup of coffee. You know, we never offer our guests any more than that, regardless of the occasion. I'd like to offer a French meal. A French meal? A French meal? Oh, s'il vous plaît, pour une fois. 
Au vrai dîner français. Au vrai dîner français oh. Eh bien, disons cela, Babette. C'est entendu, Babette. Ah. And there's something else. We'll call it Babette house money. Oh, no, Babette. That is just out of the question. I couldn't agree to that. No, Babette. Not with your own money. Mademoiselle, it is a reasonable request. Do you hear my prayer today? It comes from my heart. Hmm. Babette is right. It's the first time she's requested anything. Oh. And probably the last. C'est d'accord, Babette. C'est entendu, Babette. Merci. I hope it will be all right to take, well, a few days off from work, for I need to tell my nephew what provisions to bring. Yes, your nephew, the brave man who succeeded in spiriting you from France to Denmark. Take whatever time you'll need. Yes, Babette. Merci, mademoiselle. She'll be leaving us soon. Yes, her heart is already in France. We lose her. We'll have to somehow take care of the old with no one to fix our dinner. In a week, in a week she'll be back. Yes, but for how long? Thank you, Jens. Welcome back, Babette. Was it a good trip? Oh, yes, mademoiselle. A good one. And you saw your dear nephew? Arranged for the food? Down to the last detail. He has a family in Lille. Also a friend who acts as a supplier for foreigners. They say that they eat frogs fried in butter. Hello, my little quails. Here they come. We're lucky the provisions arrived here 
Safe and fresh. But what are they for? For the celebration. Pour le dîner français. You mean to serve wine? C'est du Clos Vougeot, 1845. De chez Philippe au Montaugoy. Intentions were good. Philippa and I merely wanted to grant Babette's wish. My friends, we had no idea as to where it was leading. You have to understand. My father's anniversary may expose us all to evil powers. I cannot say just what she will serve at table. We must ask God's protection. I rescue your people, dear Jesus. Forgive me. <laughs> Martina, don't cry. Oh, if I could only tell you how often I think of my father now. I feel he is looking down on us and seeing his daughters veritably ruining his name in a satanic Sabbath. We shall not say anything, not a word, about food or drink. Hallelujah. I concur. It's a very smart decision. None of us will essay as much as a as much as a word about what is put on the table. Not one comment will pass our lips. We will sit down, then we all fall silent. The tongue. The tongue. That strange little muscle has accomplished so much that is great and glorious. Also it is done. But let us not lose sight of the witch's Sabbath. His Dark Highness would like us to lose our train of thought. His Dark Highness lives in fear of our master. At the groaning board, we'll use our tongues to pray in gratitude for all that he meant to us. Hallelujah. Grant us salvation. It will be just as if we never had a sense of taste. <laughs> Mrs. Lohenhelm. Uh -huh. Go get yourself some refreshments in the kitchen. Thank you, ma'am. 
This is from Mrs. Lowenhill. She writes that she has had an unexpected visit from her nephew, General Lawrence Lowenhill. He has spoken with admiration of our father and may the general accompany her. We've had a message from Mrs. Lowenhelm. Her nephew, General Lorenz Lowenhelm, will accompany her this evening. So we shall be 12 for dinner, not 11 as planned. The general is with the Royal Swedish Court. During his youth, the general lived in Paris. En général. Don't you worry, mademoiselle. I'll take care of the general. This is for the turtle soup. All right. What's the end? Is there anything that you need, Babette? No, mademoiselle. All is in order. The candles. Vanity. Vanity. All is vanity. realized all that you dreamt of. Satisfaction down to the last jot. But to what end? Tonight we too shall settle our score. You shall furnish evidence that I chose correctly. will be done.
Good evening. Dear sister. Come inside. So Miss nice Ward. to be here. Let me take your coat. Get ready. They're here. So many years of victories end here in defeat. Is this my Waterloo? the general. And Mrs. Lowenhelm, our old friend. She is one of the faithful. Yes. Dear lady, welcome. So nice of you to have us. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for coming such a long way. So nice to see you. Good evening, Mrs. Lowenhelm. Good evening, dear sisters. Good evening, dear brothers. General. Good evening, General. General. An honor, General. Please sit down. Gentlemen. Inside. It's warmer. Thanks. Now we're ready to serve. We'll begin serving now. Well, let's take our places. Yes.
remember we have lost our sense of taste. And now, let us pray in my pastor's own words. Amen. Not a word about it. Not a word. Like the wedding at Cana, the meal is not important. We'll not even think about it. Exquisite. Uh, Amontillado. The best I have ever tasted outside of Spain. Quite definitely, this is a genuine turtle soup. It is truly the best turtle soup I've had in years. Now, Eric, the champagne. Each gets a glass. Except the general. Fill the general up. Right. Must be a kind of lemonade. General? Oh, thank you. This is Pliny's Demidoff. <laughs> this is certainly Vaucliquot, 1860. I think that the snow is a lot worse this year, since November. Cold weather. I remember well my very first meeting with Pastor and the sermon he preached. I was quarrelsome and, and vile. <laughs> and it was your father who made me see the light. And you could forget his saying, Pastor, near in all time. Yeah. Your, your pastor, pastor is, is near, near in all, all time. time. Dear friends, I can assure you that the pastor's collected sermons are among the favorite reading of Her Majesty the Queen.
Eric, in the tall glasses. Carefully, Eric. This is good. This is good. Mm. Do you remember the year, the pastor? It was really like a miracle. Like the new floor that we put in. That'd be the uh, partnage floor, which at the time we didn't know how we'd be able to pay for it. Oh, yes, thank you, as long as you're pouring. Just a bit, it's freezing out. Just across the fjord was this village where he had promised to preach a Christmas sermon. But by the 10th of December, I write the date if it's important to my soul. They're very important those days. Very important. Anyway, the day of the sermon. Did I tell you about how bad the weather was? But the fjord froze and he was able to cross it on foot. He preached the sermon. Holiest man in the history of Denmark. One day in Paris, after I had won a, a writing competition, my French fellow officers extended a, an invitation to dinner. Thus did I have my first experience at that justly renowned restaurant, Café Anglais. Oddly, the chef of this restaurant was a female. We fed on Caillon Sacrofage, a dish of her own creation and a delectable memory. The Caillon sacrifice were a favorite of General Gallifet. Now, the general had this rather interesting notion that this woman, this head chef, had the ability to transform a dinner into a kind of love affair. <laughs> yes, a love affair that made no distinction between spiritual and other appetites. General Gallifet said that in the past he had fought a duel for the hand of a desired woman. But now, in all of France, there was not a woman for whose sake he would risk his life, with the exception of the Café Anglais chef. She was considered the greatest culinary genius. <clears throat> and what we are dining on, I assure you, is nothing less than Kai en Sacrifage. Hallelujah. Well, I tell you, it really is Kai en Sacrifage. Yeah? Yes. is not his bowels because he eats to live instead of perpetrating sin so said our dear pastor in all his wisdom As Pastor always said, dear brothers and sisters, the only things we can take with us from this earthly life are those that are given away. Then our dear sisters will be millionaires in heaven. No, no, no.
good meal, Auntie. Well, the storm has died down, yes. Water and the small glasses. General? Ah, just look at these beauties. Our joy in Jesus. Oh, how exciting to be a Christian. To be one of so many in prayer. Pastoral servant. My mind is in a quandary. quandary. There are friends on earth, heaven as well. Righteousness and its cousin bliss have kissed one another. Mercy and truth have had a lover. The foolish doubter risks more even than heaven. His heart's fruition. But no, it betrays our simple wisdom. There comes a time when our eyes are opened. Focus and colors change and show the way to heaven. We know that mercy is infinite. We need only await it with confidence. For we realize there is something good in the loving you. And then we find that everything we have chosen has been granted to us. The loving Lord, the ocean's foam, and the white peak of the mountain. Love, truth, and mercy, infinitely separate. Righteousness and bliss shall kiss one another, and the love of Christ will illuminate the world. The Savior's suffering is all over. Ruth? You really did cheat me on that load of wood you sold me. Oh, I'd say that you paid about twice what it was worth. A businessman. Brother, I knew that you were stealing and I thought you should get your turn. 
Then touche, dear brother. See if there's another clue for you. Is there more wine for the general? Yes. Eric, let the general pour. After the coffee and the small glasses, then do the sitting room. Yes. Mix, mark, bean, champagne. Now, the sitting room. Mm. Thank you. Indeed, the sitting room. Oh, nice. Which way? Grace, so big. You're very nice to say that, dear Anna. You're so intelligent, Christopher. Brother. should be getting on our way. The general and his aunt are ready. Thanks for dinner. Thanks for your help. Good night. 
I have been with you every day of my life. Say that you knew. I knew. In the future, I shall also be with you every day and night, same as it was before. Every evening, I shall dine at your table, not with my body, which is of no importance, but with my soul, for I am forever your lover and friend. For I have learned tonight but in this universe, God is the word, and all things are possible. What a lovely dinner. The wine was nice, too. Come along, my dear. I'll see you home. Yes. I never tasted such fruit. Christopher, you're a prince. Will you come to tea tomorrow? Of course, dear Anna. Everyone realized it was a special meal. I was the cook in question at Café Anglais. We shall all remember this evening when you are back in Paris. I shan't return to Paris. You're not going back to Paris? There is no one waiting for me there. All dead and buried. And I don't have any money. No money? Those 10,000 francs? It's all gone. 10,000 francs? A meal like that at the Café Anglais costs 10,000 francs. Dear Babette, you should not have given everything you own for us. In fact, I did not do it just for you. Yes, but now you'll have nothing for the rest of your life. You don't understand. It's obvious. You 
I mean, that's the kind of meal you cooked at the famous cafe. Mm. I didn't cook, I practiced art. And when I did, Papa always knew. Papa recognized. Achille? Papa? Yes. He said, and I thought I'd forgotten it. There sounds a cry from the artist's soul. Give me the chance to do my very best. But you can't think it's all over, Babette. Surely Providence cannot allow it. In paradise, you will be the truly great artist that our merciful Lord meant you to be. Oh. How you will delight all the angels.